Good morning. Good morning. morning. I got to say, I am surprised with how many of you braved the cold today. I thought it might just be Dan and Nancy and Tom and I, but I'm thankful for you uh, gathered here today who came out into the cold. It's very nice to have you uh, with us this morning. Uh, To those of you at home, we give thanks to God for the gift of technology that allows us to be together uh, in the middle of a pandemic and also when it's freezing cold so you can stay cozy. But remember, it's good to be in church too. So I look forward to those of you uh, who have been at home coming back when the time is right. It will be a joyful day when uh, we can all worship freely together. Several announcements I want to make. Uh, First of all, I want to thank everyone who was here for our annual meeting last week. We had, I think, a really good annual meeting. I'm very thankful for uh, the support of of you, the members of this congregation, uh, for for just supporting your church. I want to thank those who uh, have have come off council. Uh, We'll be welcoming our new council in on Wednesday night. But I want to thank uh, Nancy Farnham, Dave Billing, Colin Transrude, uh, Wilbur Schleck, Jim Lund, and Danny Galbraith for serving on council these past years. Uh, thank you for your faithful service. Janet, too. I don't want to forget Janet. Thank you for your uh, leadership as well. And we look forward to a new year with the new council. We ask for uh, your prayers and blessing upon uh, your congregational leadership as we look uh, to how we can be church together in the months ahead. Our uh, food drive Our February food drive is underway. I hope you've noticed in the newsletter we've been talking about this, uh, but there's been a lot of work here at the church to create a food pantry specifically for Enderlin that is well underway, and uh, we're looking to open up in, uh, I think, March 9th, and we're asking uh, you, the people of First Lutheran, and our friends to help us stock those shelves. So we'll be having a food drive all month long, uh, really, I think just ongoing from this point uh, to collect food for uh, the Enderlin Food Pantry. Um, There will be a mailer going out this week as well, so look for that. Uh, But we're really excited. There's a lot of progress been made. Uh, Again, thanks to the Mythunes for the work on getting that storage room converted down there. It looks great. Thank you for your your time and talents. I want to uh, turn your attention to the flowers here. Uh, these are a gift to the congregation from Laura Enger. Her grandfather, Leslie, passed away, uh, I think, last week, and these are from his service. Uh, she brought them to share with us for uh, our worship. Uh, they are beautiful, and uh, we want to just take a moment to, uh, to pray for Laura and her family and all those who mourn. Uh, so let's take a moment in prayer. Good and gracious God, we remember the ways your son brought comfort to those who grieved and how he promised that all who believe in him will have eternal life. And we give you thanks, Lord, that uh, Leslie Riger, Laura Enger's grandfather, knows the joy that comes from your presence. We give you thanks that you have wrapped him in your love for all eternity. And we pray, Lord, for all those who are mourning this day, all those who are missing a loved one or a friend. Be there, Lord, to to wipe the tears from their eyes. Help them to uh, not only mourn, but to uh, weep tears of joy, for your love is great and endures all things. Be with Laura and her family and all who mourn this day. In your name we pray. Amen. Uh, Looking ahead, we'll have Ash Wednesday coming up on the 17th. Again, we'll have two services that day, one at 11 o'clock in the morning and another one at 7 p.m. In position of ashes will be available at both with communion to go uh, at the morning service and the option for communion to go or in person at the evening service on Ash Wednesday. And today is, we'll be observing communion today following service for those of you who are here in the sanctuary and even though it's negative 20 outside we will I will be offering communion to go to those of you who dare to start your cars and come up I won't be out there the whole time so honk your horn or something and I'll come and give you communion but uh, if you brave the cold I'd love to see you so 
those announcements out of the way, we can move into our service. We'll begin with our opening hymn, Gather Us In, which contrary to the bulletin is number 715 in your blue books. It's 718. 718, thank you. <laughs> 718. stand. We've gathered this day in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sin and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. 
We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways for the glory of your holy name. And the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ, was given to die for you. For his sake, God forgives you all of your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he grants the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. pray. Everlasting God, you give strength, strength to the weak and power to the faint. Make us agents of your healing and wholeness, that your good news may be known to the ends of your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated as we hear our readings. Thank you, Tom. Good morning. morning. Our Old Testament lesson for the fifth Sunday after Epiphany is from Isaiah chapter 40. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither, and the tempest, tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see, who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My ways is hidden in, from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? 
The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will, paint, will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Here ends the lesson. Our psalm for today is Psalm 147, verses 1 through 11 and 20. Please respond with the print in bold. It's on the back of your bulletin. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious, and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord, the Lord builds, builds up, up Jerusalem. Jerusalem. He, he gathers, gathers the, the outcasts of Israel. Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He, he determines, determines the, the number, number of the stars. stars. He, he gives, gives to all of them their names. names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the, the wicked to the ground. ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He, he covers, covers the heavens with clouds. He prepares rain for the earth. earth. He makes grass grow on the hills. hills. He gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. His, his delight, delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasures in the speed of the man. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his steadfast love. Praise, Praise the, the Lord. Lord. Our New Testament lesson is from 1 Corinthians chapter 9. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became a Jew, in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but I am under Christ's law, so that I might win those who outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it for all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. Here ends the lesson. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told Jesus about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And Jesus cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his, his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. Jesus answered, let us go on to the neighboring town so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came to do. And he went out through Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of our Lord. Together, let us confess our common Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Peace and grace to you, friends, from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This past week, the confirmation students and I, we finished up watching uh, the 2003 uh, film about Luther, uh, about Martin Luther, just entitled Luther. Uh, the movie does a pretty good job, I think, of capturing a lot of the significant moments in Luther's life. And while it is obviously dramatized, I think it, it it's pretty honest and, and true to form about Luther and some of his experiences. And if you haven't seen it, I recommend it to you. I got the DVD downstairs. You can borrow it. It's a great movie, a great way to get a kind of a, a quick look at Lutheran history and some of the things going on during the Reformation. And some of you may be uh, familiar with Luther's story. Some of you may not. Uh, but Luther, in his early days as a monk, was paralyzed by fear. Fear of an angry and vengeful God, fear of eternal damnation and suffering, fear that he was simply not good enough, fear that no matter what he did, he would not be good enough. And Luther tried everything he could think of to get right with God. He would perform various acts of penance, and at times he took it to uh, quite extreme limits. He would strip down naked in the winter and lie face down in the snow in the shape of a cross as a sign of penitence and repentance. He would uh, do self-flagellation. He would whip himself with cords uh, to, to brutalize his flesh as a way to, to purify the body and be free of sin. He would make confession day in and day out going to confession often multiple times a day, confessing uh, essentially non-sins, anything he could, he would try to confess as a way to get right, to get clean, right, to be straight with God. And it got to the point where uh, his confessor, the one he was confessing to, essentially told him to stop. Stop confessing to me. Because these things you are confessing are not really sins. But for Luther, he was totally preoccupied with all this, day and night agonizing over his own sin, his own nature, and it, it almost drove him mad, I think. He was paralyzed by his fear. And in the movie, and I don't know if this is true, but it, it might be, his confessor and the head of the monastery says to him at some point, he hands him the cross from around his neck, it says, if you want to know what God is like, look to Jesus. Look to Christ. So when we look at Christ, what do we see? What does the, the Jesus we see in the gospel reveal to us about Christ himself and thus about God? Today's lesson from Mark comes on the heels of what we heard last week. Last week, Jesus taught in the synagogue, uh, and they all were amazed by the way he taught uh, and what he had to say. They were amazed by how he was able to command the unclean spirit to come out of this man, right? Everybody was amazed by him. And the gospel today is immediately after that. After they left the synagogue, they go to the house of Simon Peter, and Andrew and his mother-in-law is there, and she is sick. Jesus lifts her by the hand. Her fever is cured. 
She's made a whole and renewed. And then that night, word is spreading. Right? As I said last week, this incident in the synagogue starts to build Jesus' fame. And, and already in that same day, the whole town is coming out, crowding the door of the house, bringing their sick, bringing those who are possessed. Right, Everyone's coming out to see Jesus. And we find that Jesus restores those who are brought to him. He heals those who are sick. He cures their diseases. He removes those things that are preventing them from living into the fullness of their life. Jesus does all this without thought of cost or reward. He heals people. He cures people. He restores them without thought of merit or worth. He does it all out of his free grace because it is in his very nature to be this, this healing presence, this restorative presence. The nature of Jesus, his compassion, his grace, his love, and his mercy is the very same nature he shares with the Father and with the spirits, for they are all one Father, Son, and Spirit together. And so what Jesus reveals to us, we know it to be true about God and about the spirits. Restoring, healing, invigorating, giving people life. And again, and Jesus does all this without thought of merit or worth. Jesus doesn't cue everybody up at the door and evaluate them, have them fill out a questionnaire about their life to decide if they're worthy of receiving his healing or his grace, right? It's a free gift for all people, no matter who they are, no matter what they have done in their life. Luther came to realize that for himself as well, that, that the God that we have loves us freely as we are, as we are created. For him, that, that awakening that we are, are freed uh, by grace alone, that we can't earn it, but that God gives it to us anyway, that changed his life. And all that weight, all that fear just melted away because he knew he discovered the real nature of God. Our psalm for today, one, Psalm 147, is a great psalm of praise. Indeed, it begins and ends with uh, uh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And it goes on and it begins to list some of these things that we know about God to be true. Listing uh, the things of God that are praiseworthy, how it is fitting to praise to God, how God gathers the outcast, how he heals the brokenhearted, he binds up wounds, lifts up the downtrodden, casts down the wicked, this litany of God's uh, actions, the way that God is, the psalmist points to these are the reasons we give praise to God. Because this is the God that we have. God of compassion and grace and mercy. And I wonder if we were to compose our own psalms, our own psalms of praise, what would be our verses? What would be the verses that you write and giving praise to God. What are those moments in your life that you give great thanks to God for? What are the things that he has done for you that make you want to uh, either fall to your knees and weep with joy or to jump up and shout in celebration? What are those things for you? Why do you praise the Lord? 
that's your homework for today, for this week. And I, of course, I'm not going to check your work. But I invite you to, to take the time to reflect on those things. Reflect on the things that cause you to want to give praise to God. And that's, that psalm that you write, whether you write it on paper or it's written, and your heart could be short, it could be long, but it'll be your psalm. Your psalm of praise. And I would love, love to hear those psalms dare to write I would love to hear them I'd love for you to share them that's part of what we are uh, invited to do as people of faith it's why the Psalms were written the psalmist uh, sharing those things that uh, swell in from the from the depths of their hearts about why this God we have is so good and why it is indeed fitting to sing praise to our God. What is your song? What is your praise? Whatever it is, it is fitting and good that you should praise him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, for he is good, and his love endures forever. Amen. Gathered together through the Holy Spirit, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all those in need. Our petitions this day will end with, hear us, O God. Please respond with, your mercy is great. We pray for the church, for ministries of healing and wholeness, for hospital, hospice, and military chaplains, those serving in prison ministry, and for all who proclaim freedom, and release in the name of Christ. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, mercy is great. great. For all of creation, for insects in the grass, for clouds on mountaintops, for cattle in the rainwater they drink, for the humility to take our place among all the creatures of your earth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, mercy is great. great. For the nations, for all who lead in cities, in towns, states, and counties, countries, for community organizers, for school officials, for business and community leaders, for international health organizations that in time of trial, fear, or hopelessness 
offer a hope and service to those in need. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. For all wearied by life's burdens, for those who are poor, for those lacking supportive relationships, for those crushed by debt, for those struggling with chronic pain or sickness, for those exhausted from overwork or stress, and for all who cry out to you, especially those we name aloud before you now or silently in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy is great. For this congregation, for those who worship uh, in this building and worship from afar, for those who call First Lutheran home, may your spirit be upon us, Lord. Strengthen us in our love for one another and our love for you. Encourage us as we uh, look to serve our neighbors and bless our efforts to uh, create a food pantry to serve our friends and neighbors in this community, Lord. Hear us, O oh God. Your Your mercy, mercy is great. great. All these things, Lord, and all that you know that we need for our lives, may you grant to us according to your will of the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord and Savior took bread. He blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink. This covenant is a new cup. Uh, shed in my blood for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Together let us pray as our Lord and Savior has taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for God's people. All are welcome. Again, we will commune together in person following uh, the end of our live stream. Those of you at home, I invite you to come down and, and see me uh, however so briefly. It would be nice to see you for a moment and share communion with you. As we go forward today, friends, whatever the day may bring for us, may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord's face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May the Lord look upon us with kindness and give us peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Shine brightly and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.